to Logical, the UE's first and only, even now, regular legal podcast. My name's Tim Elliott, and I'm with the managing partner of the Dubai-based legal firm HPL Yamalava and Plethka here in Dubai. Ludmilla Yamalava, how nice to see you. Well, good to see you too, Tim. This episode of Logical, registering a civil will at Abu Dhabi Judicial Department, Ludmilla. It's important news, I think. We've got more and more people... Uh, living here in the UAE, making the UAE their home, or at least spending more time here. So this announcement is welcome. Uh, indeed, and uh, just as a way of reminder, this is not the first, uh, per- perhaps, a forum or option for uh, civil wills in the UAE. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've ha- and we've covered this before on previous podcasts. The yeah. the DIFC or Dubai International Financial Center Will Center has um, been in existence for a few years now, allowing non-Muslim expats or non-Muslims in general to register wills in the UAE. And it started out just to be limited to Dubai assets. Then it um, extended to uh, Ras Al and now it basically not only just extended to the the rest of the UAE, but also globally. Uh, in other words, you can include um, your kind of global estate into uh, into the will in the, into the DIFC will. Yeah. Uh, so we've we've talked about that. I mean that and that particular um, uh, service is located under the DIFC umbrella. Uh, uh, however, uh, one of the perhaps drawbacks that um, we were short uh, shortcomings uh, of, of this particular service that we have experienced or we've uh, heard um, uh, sort of complaints about is the cost, the cost of registering yeah. a DFC will. It's, it's uh, quite pricey. Uh, it certainly is uh, has many of the benefits, as we've discussed before, but in terms of for those who are perhaps more cost conscious or uh, those who have fairly, in, in their minds at least, fairly simple s- scenarios for um, in terms of um, what their uh, sort of life earnings or their estate may be, uh, that uh, that cost in the DIFC is pretty pricey. Uh, also, because a lot of um, um, in most of the cases, it not only do you need to pay the DFC will uh, will fees, but also or the DFC center fees, but also lawyer fees, uh, because those wills have to be drafted in a certain kind of way. Anyway, be it as it may, uh, now Abu Dhabi has um, uh, not long ago introduced its own version uh, for civil wills, and that's the. Uh, through its Abu Dhabi Family Court, uh, which sits under the uh, Abu Dhabi Judicial Department, or ADJD. And as part of this um, service, which is, uh, 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 which is uh, I guess, uh, perhaps was created uh, by virtue of a specific law, uh, which is law number 14 of uh, uh, 2021 concerning civil marriages and its effects in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Uh, so this, p- this will service, or civil will service, was introduced. Uh, and so now, you, in addition to the DIFC, um, residents, or tourists, whoever it is that wants to register interests uh, or a will, a civil will in, uh, in the, the UAE, also now has the option of registering through ADJD. Uh, and um, um, that's in the cost for that particular service is a lot, uh, perhaps a, li- a lot less uh, uh, arduous <laughs> than the DIFC fees. Uh, so yeah, so this is it's a, it's a new, uh, f- a fairly new service, uh, but uh, certainly not the first one. So you can now register a will uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, what do you have to do? What's the process? What kinds of documentation do you need to provide? Uh, so, uh, as is uh, perhaps becoming a lot more of a common practice these days in the UAE, a lot of these government services are becoming al- um, almost exclusively accessible online uh, or digitally, uh, which makes it a lot more efficient and a lot more economical in terms of uh, just w- availing themse- yourself of, of these kinds of benefits. Mm. So, in this particular case, it's all done through ADJD website, uh, and uh, to um, access the service, you just go on the ADJD, and the ADJD, once again, stands for Abu Dhabi Judicial Department, which is Abu Dhabi Courts. So ADJD website, you log in using your UAE Pass, and this is, we've talked about UAE Pass before in in our podcast, and this is uh, one of um, the significant benefits of having or uh, or activating your UAE Pass. So it becomes your your centralized login into all sorts of government services. So you log in with your UAE Pass into ADJD, and there there's a special um, service, it's called the Civil Family Court e-services, and under it there's an application for um, a request to authenticate a civil will. Uh, so that's sort of the sub sub uh, service uh, in uh, uh, you know in 
uh, on the website in, in this um, in this package, uh, and then um, and then from there on, there is an option to basically. I, so there's, there's two ways of actually uh, submitting or doing a will. You can either use an ADJD's own template, mm -hmm. and so they do have their own uh, uh, template, which by the way is in English and Arabic. Um, so. Uh, which is very convenient for um, uh, for most, espe especially those who have fairly simple estate, if you will, and for whom this template would work because um, that text, uh, you can just use it as is for the most part. Uh, so that's one option. The other option is if you want to have your own will, you can also introduce uh, your own draft, uh, but that draft will have to be legally translated into Arabic as well. Right. So that's the benefit, I guess. That's another benefit of uh, using the ADGD uh, template is that you don't need to translate and uh, that draft is already basically sort of verified uh, by the authorities. So you do have two options, either using their template or you can have your own template as long as it has both English and Arabic. And perhaps this is one difference between the ADJD civil will and, for example, the DIFC will, because in the DIFC it's all English only. Um, so uh, there, there's no necessity for, uh, for having to translate uh, your your will, which by the way is uh, fairly is, is also uh, beneficial for many because those who are not Arabic speakers to have a will or a document like this in another language, it's it's not just um, uh, perhaps not useful, but in some ways kind of d distracting as well. So that's you know, if if you wanted to compare mm -hmm. the pluses and the minuses between the two options, that's just another factor to keep in mind. Sure. Um, so yes, yeah, so once you've submitted that, and then as part of the application, what you do is you submit this um, the draft will uh, and your documents which is basically your passport copy and uh, also Emirates ID uh, and then pay uh, pay the fee uh, and um, and then at that point um, and you s submit the application again all online then you'll get a notification from uh, from the from ADJD um, that your application has been accepted uh, and then an appointment uh, or and they will follow up with or the court will follow up uh, with regards to an, uh, a d specific date for the appointment to actually and uh, to um, uh, to validate and to ultimately uh, formalize and finalize the will. Uh, so that appointment, again, and so in a few days you'll hear back from the courts with a specific date and a link. Uh, again, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an electronic link for you to appear online electronically uh, and before the authorities and uh, kind of verify the will and then sort of formalize it. Uh, so um, fairly, again, fairly mm. technologically advanced and very efficient. Uh, the when the link uh, when, the, when the link arrives with the sort of the email, then you know once you're on the day of that appointment, you log in, uh, and all you need to do is verify that the, the the draft will that you had already submitted is your will. You just kind of go through the details of the will and your identification documents and your identification details. Uh, and uh, confirm that this is your will, this is how you want it to be, and at that point uh, uh, the authorities will then uh, consider that to be kind of the, the registration, the validation of your wishes, uh, and um, then you have your sort of attested will. After that they will send you the attested will, and voila, you have your will ready. So a million miles from my kind of the image of creating a will in my mind of the the dusty old wood panelled lawyer's office with the the weighty legal tomes in the bookcase and all of that it's it's you could almost do it on the beach in the car as long as you appear I mean, it's completely different I, I think most people probably do exactly <laughs> that <Yeah. laughs> from, the, from, uh, from the beach or from the car uh, absolutely and it's interesting because we've even seen how this process has evolved with for example in the DIFC where in the beginning and part of the DIFC's whole sort of proposition and, and package and is that um, you would go you actually this uh, online or any kind of remote uh, registration of will was not allowed it mm. just was was not an option, mm -hmm. was not allowed, just would not be even entertained. Obviously, COVID had uh, flipped everything upside down on its head. Uh, so after COVID, it became, it became optional. And now I don't even think that's not that's even an option for you to physically be present there. Yeah, but yeah. but as when it when it started out, it was very similar to what you're describing. You'd have to not only physically show up there, but you'd also have to go through fairly uh, complex um, uh, drafting because the language is very it's very sort of legalese. The the will itself, yeah. There's a whole list of questions and ideas that you need to con consider. And and I'm not saying that's that process is still not required for many. It's still that's still a better option uh, mm. because 
because their lives perhaps a lot more complicated and they need to be addressed and and documented in ways that are a lot more complex which the perhaps in that case the dfc will center is is more suitable mm. uh, but for those for so many other people who just live here and all they have is just one bank account for example or in car or or just want to even include guardianship or just uh, uh, yeah. provisions for, for yeah. their children um then this is the the adjd is definitely a very good alternative but uh, but the DIFC started out that way. So you would go and you will not only physically uh, have to present yourself and uh, meet with and, and actually go through the will literally word by word, page by page, and then sign every page. And afterwards, they would give you this very nice leather-bound uh, folder <laughs> or multiple copies of, of these folders, cause depending on how many wills or how many of you were there registering, if it was a couple, and you just walk away with this big... Uh, so sort of nice uh, leather-bound uh, uh, folders uh, of your will. Now, fast forward you know, five years, uh, now uh, that's not even an option, so it's all QR code. So the DFC wow. wills now, they don't even print a copy. There's no more original stamps. Before, there was, you, there was always a question at the end of your will appointment, how many copies you want, how many uh, sort of true copies, and then they'll be stamping with the actual uh, physical stamps and ribbons and uh, leather-bound binders. Now, that's no longer an option. <laughs> it's just the only thing you'll get is a, an electronic form of your will bought with a QR code, which obviously wow. is, uh, is, is uh, verifiable and uh, a, lot more, uh, a lot more efficient. Times have changed. The other thing, and you, you kind of alluded to this, the DIFC will is still an expensive, a relatively expensive process, and there are reasons for that, and for some people that's the way to go. But if you register your civil will in Abu Dhabi, it is substantially cheaper it's much more what's the phrase uh, cost effective indeed it is yeah. and uh, on that note the the application or the registration of a civil will uh, fee is 950 dirhams now it's still about 300 something dollars but if you compare it to the DIFC where depending on the type of will it's we're talking about thousands of dirhams it's about 10,000 dirhams versus a mm. thousand dirhams so it's about a, a 10 10 times uh, cheaper yeah. to do it in ADJD so uh, obviously again it's not an option for everyone but certainly is a very cost effective and economical and very uh, effective uh, option for uh, many others who live in the UAE or who have, have some sort of interest in the UAE so that's how you do it and what it costs and what's your advice just generally speaking Ludmilla what's your advice to someone who's thinking of making a will um, what do they need to do and, and I suppose as well who should have a will so I would say uh, perhaps anyone who lives in the UE or works in the UE or has any interest in the UE I said I I would say should have a will mm. Uh, and why? Because even if you don't, because um, if you work here, even if you don't own anything, but you work here, you still have something of value. A, you have a bank account. Uh, B, you, if you work here, you receive money into that bank account. Mm. C, you most likely have a car. Uh, D, you probably have some kind of personal possessions in your house, even if it's a rented property. Uh, and then also, if you're married, most likely you are, or not most likely, but in many cases, you may have children. Mm. So these wills, also one of the benefits of these wills is they also include provisions about guardianship and, and, uh, and custody uh, for your minor children. So um, even if you don't, you're not very asset rich, if you have minor children, it's just a very sensible uh, precaution or almost like an insurance plan and um, that or a roadmap that you can have uh, just to um, to ensure that your wishes are, are well documented and can ultimately be relied on you know when you're not around to uh, to, <laughs> to see them through so I would say everyone should consider having one I in the past it was more difficult to uh, say that way uh, and that's why your question is is very um, is very uh, um, well <laughs> you phrased uh, because of the cost so while yeah. i think it's sensible for people to have a will but previously the dfc the cost was so exorbitant uh, for m many people who perhaps don't have many assets and they may just have either minor children or all they have is just uh, one bank account um, so it just perhaps would not have been fair to say everybody should have a will but now with this option 
uh, available. Not only at least uh, is it uh, financially ex uh, affordable, uh, but it's also in terms of in the practical ways of executing it. It's all online. You don't have to drive to Abu Dhabi. You don't need to be an Abu Dhabi resident. Uh, and also, and this is important to highlight, is that when you have this will, you're not just registering a document. It's not just a contract, which is, by the way, the case in most other jurisdictions. You just basically have a contract. This you're registering with the authorities, and not only just authorities, judicial authorities. Because yeah. let's say yeah. if you have a will in the U.S., all you it's it's a contract. It's basically you draft a contract, then you register it, not register it. You basically deposit it with either with your lawyers or you exchange it with your spouse or your family members, and that's about it. You don't have to register with any kind of official authority. In this case, especially with ADJD, but similar in the DIFC. This is all being conducted and administered and registered and stored uh, ultimately with not just an authority, but the judicial authority, i.e. the courts. Mm. And so therefore, when the time comes to actually enforce uh, or um, probate, so that's another legalese term for, for enforcing the will, uh, it's already done under the umbrella of the courts. So what you ultimately have uh, is, uh, or you guess your heirs would have, is, is a court judgment, it's a court decision. Uh, so not just, hey, listen, this is my will, I want now to basically go and enforce it, it's just it's a court, court decision that will say, Okay, this is basically kind of this is the mandate of the um, of the testator. Uh, so this is this is quite important to highlight. And um, also one more thing is that you know, people kind of have uh, expressed concerns about well, but how is it? What if it's Abu Dhabi? You know, I have, w but my assets are in Dubai. What does that mean? Well, because it will be a court judgment, right? And it's a local court judgment, i.e., UAE court judgment. It will be equally enforced in other in other Emirates as it would be in the uh, in the issuing Emirates. In other words, just because it's an Abu Dhabi court that's issuing this this decision or this decree, uh, it does not make it uh, unenforceable in other Emirates. So, because it is still a local decree, a local court decree. It will be equally enforced in other Emirates, uh, and so and that's an important um, point to emphasize that it's not just a document, it's not just uh, a contract, uh, and uh, but in fact it's a it will it will lead to a court issued uh, document or mandate or decree uh, to uh, which the heirs uh, and the beneficiaries can later on rely on throughout the UAE. And courts tend to recognise courts, particularly the courts in this country, so that makes a lot of sense. Rather than a, a will that was perhaps drafted in a different country many years ago, that's clearly going to be a more difficult process. This, it, it, seem, it seems pretty streamlined to me. Uh, it certainly is. Now, as I say this, and we, we talked about it in the beginning, is that this, the law that allowed for this or introduced this service was ultimately introduced based in 2022, beginning of 2022. Yes. Uh, so it's only about a year and a half old. So the service is available mm -hmm. and it's accessible and we've tested it, we've seen it at work. Right. Uh, now, we have not yet seen anyone actually having to, to sort of to probate <laughs> one of these wills, right. which perhaps is a good thing. <laughs> so uh, how it's going to be uh, applied in practice remains to be seen. And when we do have an actual case study, uh, we'll certainly do another follow-up podcast on that topic. But I predict knowing how, uh, how in other circumstances or in other uh, cases, we do you when you have an Abu Dhabi judgment, how to enforce it in other Emirates, it's a fairly straightforward process. Oh, you can't predict what's going to happen in the future, but at least you can try to make provisions for what might is the point. Well, the idea here, I, I would say I can actually predict what would happen, and that is that you, once you have an Abu Dhabi or ADGD decision, you just uh, you enforce it in any other Emirate, just as you would um, enforce another court decision from any one of these Emirates across the UAE. So right. I think the process is more or less predictable. It's just we have not seen one of these wills in particular being applied in other, uh, in other Emirates just yet. That's another edition of Logical, registering a civil will in Abu Dhabi, the capital of the UAE, ADJD. That's the Abu Dhabi Judicial Department. As ever, thank you for watching, listening, or both. And thanks to our legal expert, managing partner here at Yamalava and Plethka, Ludmilla Yamalava. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Now, uh, find us at LY Law, social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. The podcasts, they're all free at lylawyers.com. If you'd like a legal question answered, in Logical in a future episode, or if you'd like to talk to a qualified UE experienced legal professional, click the contact button once again at lylawyers.com.